presentation is about uh, analyzing this uh, spatial uh, temporal patterns and impacts uh, of large scale data productions event, production events in OSM. And it's by uh, Ya and others. So please, Ya, you have 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Yair. I'm um, a lecturer at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. But until recently, I was a member of the GI Science Research Group here, uh, thanks to the funding of the Alexander von Humboldt uh, Foundation. So this work started here in cooperation with people from here and continues on. So, uh, and basically what we're trying to do is to try to identify large-scale events in, in OpenStreetMap and understand how they impact the data in the community. Um, and just to contextualize everything, uh, um, the, the, the thought comes from the evolving idea of notion of VGI, which started from uh, the very, what now is cliche, everyone with a computer, with an internet connection can map, it's a bottom-up approach, and which evolved academically into understanding of when you research VGI, when you research uh, uh, stuff like OSM, you cannot separate the process from the data, and you need to study those uh, together. And that led on to a contextual understanding of the data. You always need to understand the context in which data is, present, is produced when you study it. And thanks God, OpenStreetMap is rich with contextual effects, starting with in which platform if you, map, you map, which kind of interactions do you have with other mappers, this conference, mailing lists, and so on. Organizations, we heard about, a bit about that and also data events, which is the focus of this talk. And when, when I say data events, you probably think of that, but uh, like mapathons, social gatherings, but that's only one of the perspective for defining events in OpenStreetMap. The, let's call it the social one, the one that's more about how people gather and, and produce data together. But I'm more interested in this talk in the data perspective like looking at events that significantly change the data, that make a real effect. And specifically, I'm looking at large-scale events. Uh, why? Because they are, uh, first of all, hold the, they hold the capacity to greatly affect the data and the community. And when I say large-scale data events, I refer to high volume of contribution, contributions over a short time. Now, high and short are highlighted here because what is high, what is short, that's something that it's not easy to determine. Um, and, and you can look at this graph here that shows the number of ent entities over time uh, in the Gaza Strip and in Tel Aviv. So you see, in Gaza, you have a large increase uh, in 2014, but there's also a small one in 2009. And the question is, uh, is that, a large-scale event, how big an ev a, a size of contribution, a volume contribution needs to be in order to be uh, 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 an event to significantly affect the data. And that's something I will touch on later. So in this current study, first of all, we try to identify those events uh, that make a significant change. Uh, we analyze their spatial temporal patterns and see how the dynamics of events uh, evolve and we try to study the impacts of, of those events. So as I said, there's a need to uh, define what is large scale event. Um, one option could be defining an arbitrary uh, uh, value beyond which the number of contribution is considered large. But uh, what we did here is uh, trying to adopt another approach which considered the stage in the production of the data um, and how the data should evolve without an event and what actually happened. So we assumed there's a normative or event uh, absent kind of model in which there are three basic stages that based on a, pro a paper by uh, Groshing and, and colleagues. So first of all, there should be uh, a, a stage where there aren't that many contributions, there aren't that many uh, active mappers. Then, the activity picks up, there are lots of, of uh, contribution, and then there should be some kind of saturation of the data, and the rate of contributions should uh, uh, kind of, uh, well, saturate. Um, and that should create, like, um, 
if you look at it individually, over time, this bell-shaped uh, uh, result in the number of contribution. And in the cumulative manner, it should be like this S-shaped approach. And we define events as, uh, as contributions that are so large that are not predicted by such a model. So you can see here that, uh, um, and this is hypothetical, right? That's just an example. You can see that uh, um, an event really changes the trajectory of the data and brings saturation earlier. So how did we do that? Uh, first of all, we counted the uh, contribution actions per time unit in each area we looked at. And contribution actions are not just the contributions, but breaking down each contribution uh, to the uh, specific actions within it to, uh, as a means to differentiate between just deleting something and editing. So um, creation was counted as the total number of nodes added plus the number of tags added. Edits was counting both uh, what was removed and what was added. And deletions was just uh, one action, assuming that you just click and, and, and delete. And we create, created a, uh, the cumulative uh, time series for uh, such data and fitted a logistic curve to that data because it's S-shaped. Um, and then uh, um, we computed the lagged residuals of that model. Why the lagged residuals? So you can see in orange the, um, the errors, the differences as they are when they are not lagged. When, uh, when I consider the, 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 the absolute, and you can see there's a temporal trend. The events keeps on, continue, con keeps on uh, affecting much time after the, the event. But when we uh, compute the lagged residuals, meaning the residual at time t minus the residual at time t minus one, then this trend disappears and we can identify the event. Um, so this is conceptually the procedure and how we applied it. Uh, uh, so basically this is based on the uh, OpenStreetMap historical uh, database tool that was developed here at Heidelberg. Uh, it started with uh, defining uh, uh, a spatial division of space of, of the world uh, in a quad pre-approach um, starting with uh, four, uh, four uh, uh, tiles and splitting them as long as there's uh, at least one tile with at least 20,000 entities in it. So that resulted in a, uh, a special division where uh, cells are not of the same size and not necessarily have the same number of entities, but at least a number of entities that is worth uh, uh, analyzing. Uh, the temporal resolution for the time series was one month because we thought taking one day would, be, would make the data too noisy. And the time period was from uh, November 2007 up to March 2019 because uh, before uh, data became more reliable after the switch to the uh, 0.5 API. Um, so uh, I'll just say one thing. Because the spatial division may create many cells within the same region, that's going to inflate the number of events I'm going to identify. Uh, so uh, don't be alarmed when you see large numbers. Uh, just one event in the US itself could account for thousands of individual events in my data set, in this data set. Um, apart from the number of actions per month, we also uh, 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 got some other info from that, number of active users, number of contributions by type, uh, the maximal number of actions by one user, and the actions per edited entity. And so out of 10,000, more than 10,000 cells, uh, 700 cells, uh, showed convergence error, so they are not part of the analysis. Uh, we considered only events with number of actions that was greater than 7,000, and that led to uh, 48,000 events, different events. Again, also you need to think that events may last over more than one month, so they are also separated temporarily. Um, well, it's kind of uh, hard to talk about uh, um, the goodness of fit of the model when we constructed it to be wrong to begin with, but uh, our normalized RMSC values, normalized by the median value of the, of the observed data, are still quite good. And you can see that uh, while the median 
median uh, number of events is uh, five per cell, but if you start unifying them uh, according to uh, unifying them temporarily, then the number drops to four. Um, and to further uh, uh, to, 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 to be able to uh, have more deep uh, discussion about the results, we try to classify the events uh, using a k-means procedures, uh, determining k to be equal six. Um, um, after exploring the data and uh, uh, com um, calculating some uh, some um, uh, measures, like uh, the, the Davis building one. And we uh, clusters based on uh, five variables when mainly. Four were the uh, share of each type of contribution, uh, creation, deletion, tag, uh, edit, and, um, and uh, geometry edit. And the share of all contribution during the periods of the maximal by one user. So how much of the data was contributed by just one user? Um, and you can see the results here. Um, so that's the median value across uh, uh, multiple variables uh, for the different clusters that we created. And one we can see, first of all, is that um, there are two groups here in the maximum contribution by one user. Four groups are dominated by almost one user contributing most of the data, so those are imports, and two are more distributed. When we compare those that do that are more distributed, we can see that the green one uh, is not as much uh, uh, focused on creations as the, um, the purple one. And if we look at the number of users, which wasn't used in the clustering, but we compare it here, we can see that uh, there are much more users in this kind of event than this kind of event. So we term them, the green one is local event, and the purple one are remote mapping events. Um, looking at the, um, the other, the, remote, the, the imports, so we can see this one is uh, almost dedicated entirely to creations. Um, and in terms of how much time on the median value since uh, November 2007 had passed, uh, we can see that it's quite early relative to most other types of event. So we call it early import. It's just a bulk import of data. We can compare it to the uh, black one, which is, um, which is uh, um, uh, uh, less centered on creations and a bit later, which I called, uh, we called late import. And finally, the, uh, not finally yet, the, the, um, the yellow one, which is almost, which is, has the highest rate of geometry edits. So basically we're talking of three type of imports, each of them a bit later than the other on, uh, on average, so that you can say that each kind of import is more mature. So you have early import creating the data, late import, more editing of the, the data, and geometry update, which is really editing the data. And finally, we have this, this strange result of uh, one, one cluster that is focused on mostly on tag edits. Uh, and we'll look at it a bit later on, but uh, uh, it's, it's, it's existing. Um, so how, how impactful are those events in terms of share of uh, out of all contributions in the history of OpenStreetMap? And the question is, that the answer is quite a lot. Uh, so you can see about 45% out, uh, out of all creations. Uh, um, and when we break it down, we can see that early imports are, are, uh, are responsible for much of the activity in OpenStreetMap. Now this is a bit overestimated uh, because we're using the one month resolution, but even if you uh, would remove the 10 percent of the smallest events, those numbers didn't uh, 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 fall by much. So uh, I would still consider that uh, uh, um, a, um, a um, meaningful impact. Looking at it temporarily, so what we can see in terms of number of events, we can see that, well, early imports were uh, more frequent earlier, naturally. and. Um, but over time, both uh, local events and remote, remote events become more and more 
uh, frequent. And when we look at the average number of contributions in per, per event, we can see that that also rises for local events and for remote uh, events, although uh, over the last few months that's not as much uh, uh, evident. So we can see a shift here from, uh, um, in terms of the maturity of the events, in related to the maturity of the data, and in terms of the practices, which events are happening. Instead of imports, more and more community-based events in that sense. So, well, imports are in some sense also community-based. Uh, spatial distribution. Um, so you can see there are some clusters where much of the data was created during events. Well, Canada, parts of the US, uh, large sections of uh, sub-Saharan Africa, and well, parts of Thailand and uh, Indonesia. Um, interestingly, uh, it's not, in, in Europe it's not, it changes. So you can see the Netherlands here, really uh, dependent on imports, part of, of France, and let's compare that with the most frequent type of event per cell. And we can see that the tag imports here uh, are, are mainly centered in, 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 uh, in, uh, in the US. And if you noticed before, they happened mostly during 2009. So that, that was one event during 2009. I guess it, it, I didn't manage to really pinpoint that, but I guess it's some kind of tiger import related issue. Um, but what you can see that sub-Saharan Africa is dominated uh, by uh, remote mapping events and also, um, sorry, and also uh, uh, parts of Thailand and Indonesia. Um, so uh, we can see some kind of socio-cultural relations but which events take place where and how much effect they have on the data. Because if you remember those areas that I've just pointed to are also ones that have a uh, high impact of events on the data. Um, so, but what are the Im actual impacts on activity? So we isolated those uh, 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 events which had no event uh, prior to the, six months prior to them or six months later and computed the difference, the change in different measures. Um, so that's percent of increase or decrease and what we can see, and, and comparing to months that didn't have event before and after and during, and what we can see that remote mapping uh, events have a substantial effect on activity later on, even if we compare it to the uh, control group. Um, early imports also have some, some, some effect, but geometry and uh, import and late import are uh, actually reducing activity to some extent. And well, tag import, I don't want to talk about it because it really is a kind of freak occurrence. Local uh, uh, events also don't affect that much or because, well, it doesn't necessarily mean that, that they don't have effect. It means that the same community is still active. Uh, when comparing it 12 months instead of six months, that still remains about the same. Uh, uh, and I think remote events even become a bit more dominant. Um, but also early imports and, and, and uh, tag imports create some effect. And it's mainly centered on uh, editing. So it kind of correcting the data. So we see increase in activity of correcting the data, but also in the number of users, uh, uh, at least for tag imports. Uh, so that's also interesting. Um, well, that's the probability of events start, uh, the, the relation between events. So if a first event was of that type, what's the, what is the probability of that being followed by th this kind of event? And what I'll say about that, because my time is running out, is that um, geometry, um, that imports tend to be followed by imports, and, but when we look at the local, uh, 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 the, the probability of having a local event, that's re also related to imports. So imports can create more activity that's related to uh, editing and may also create local events. So I'll quickly sum up because I'm over, over my time. So we can see that large events, large scale events have an effect on the data. Uh, they are contextual products that relate to social uh, geographical context and to the maturity of the data. 
they, as we saw with remote uh, events, they may increase the activity of, uh, of, 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 of mappers, but uh, they may have adverse effect, but sometimes wrongs can make a right. So the increased activity of editing after an import. Um, so the main takeaway is that when we're thinking about organizing event or events or having a large scale contribution, we need to think about uh, the context. And there would be first an analysis, but I'll stop here because I'm way over time. <laughs> Thanks for the excellent uh, presentation. We have about four minutes question time. Um, so if you have any question, please raise your hand. We have two mics, one there, one here, and I'll come to you. Uh, do you have um, any good understanding of why um, these uh, remote events cause so much activity afterwards? Well, first of all, Something I had to quickly skip, but uh, um, first of all, well, I'm not sure that's related, but I'll say that anyway. For, there's there's hot uh, and an organization like that, which may have also a local component, so that's part of that. And we can see that remote, well, about third of more than third of remote events are followed by local events. So that could be that. Okay. Um, Although, on the other side, it's only 33%. So, uh, um, but f surely, and I was thinking that also that morning, that we need to break down those remote events uh, and see whether um, this activity is related to those 36% or not. But the answer may lie there. there. Any further questions? Over there, okay. Well, first, thank you for a very impressive talk. I was just wondering, um, referring to what um, Jennings talked about before, the effect of cooperative edits, if they should show up somewhere. I was just thinking about the mapping activities, say, in, in Thailand. If they, I guess they have been somehow, well, summarized in, in one of the, the clusters you identify. Was there any things you could, how you could kind of identify those? Well, I, I was just asking uh, Jennings about how, how, how I saw that there's a connection here, sh surely. And from my understanding from Jennings, uh, those corporates map in different ways. So um, if it's really a dense effort by a few users, that might come up as a kind of remote event. If they actually have locals mapping, it might take further a further while so it might not show up as an event at all um, so I, I would assume that some of them are captured uh, but really depends on, 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 on the practices of that specific uh, corporation um, thank you very much